Hi everyone! In this video, I will be presenting seven strategies for blended instruction or what we call limited face-to-face. -face. We hope that we can evaluate further these initial strategies that we can prepare as we transition ourselves from the full online distance learning to limited face-to-face. -face. We hope that you can learn something from this and maybe you can add more and we can work together to improve these strategies that we identified. The first one is, the first thing that we should do is we have to finalize our policy and implementing guidelines. I am looking at three major policies and implementing guidelines that should be crafted from the administrator's level. And again, as I'd mentioned, two key players in this, uh, the administrators at the same time, the teachers being the manager in our own classroom. I am looking actually at three. One is look at the retrofitting guidelines of the, um, of the circular, of the memorandum. Retrofitting guidelines, um, in particular, we have to look at our classroom. Now, the, the guidelines mention about, mention about very infrastructural related considerations. When we say retrofitting, you have to consider redesigning your computer laboratory, if there is, even the placement of our tables and chairs. No? Um, the number of apparatus the number of laboratory equipment are can this laboratory materials can cater the limited face to face that's on the classroom point of view um in the uh, in the campus wide point of view uh, review the learning common spaces review the operation of our library we have to consider also retrofitting our hallways uh, retrofitting our our cafeteria, retrofitting all physical learning spaces of our students, and not just our students, but for our teachers and our staff, our support unit that may congregate, that may congregate in terms of schedules, vacancy, and uh, break time. Look at your scheduling. Uh, what is this? Uh, if in the full ODL, if the teaching time is 8 to 12, what will happen after 12? For sure, all of them will go out and they may, they may um, uh, uh, what's this? They may congregate in one place. They may stay in one place that may affect or violate the protocol or the guidelines by IATF or by our local health and safety protocol. What about the teaching time of our teachers? Um, if in the ODL or during the face-to-face, -face, there are 13 faculty and all of them will have break time at one time, at the same time, then are the 15 teachers be allowed to stay in the office? Technically, no, because we are not allowed to congregate 10 persons at one time because of the pandemic. So we have to change that, the scheduling technique, if you are going to implement face-to-face. -face, no? um, the vacant hours, why I highlighted break time and vacant, vacant hours, just to give you an overview or what if you have what if our university used to have a a common time for meetings like 10 to 12 wednesday what if those students have nothing to do and they are not situated in their own classroom so they are outside if they are outside the campus maybe they are staying in the library and there is also policy on the number of students 
who will stay in one place. Okay? Um, it's not, retrofitting really is not a joke. No, it's not a joke. You have to think everything. You have to redesign the infrastructure and you have to redesign the mindset of both teachers and students. That's retrofitting. Um, another important policy that uh, I'd look at also is on the class sectioning. Class sectioning, especially for two or more sections. Um, two or more sections. So say for example, you have to remember that per guidelines, this is not compulsory. Students can still, or students should be accepted whether uh, he or she will still go on with the full online distance learning or the flexible learning and the LF2F or the limited face-to-face. -face. Now, um, Let's, let's start discussing first two or more sections. So say, for example, you are handling Filipino one and there are five sections into it. For sure, our maximum number, number class size is 40 students per, per guideline in the Commission on Higher Education, maximum 40 students in a lecture class. Okay, so say, for example, if you offer five sections, my suggestion to that is you should identify a section for full ODL. Students who will not enroll in the face-to-face -face should enroll that section. And students who will enroll for a limited face-to-face -face instruction should be on that section. Why? So that teachers or in your delivery and at the same time in the preparation of your content and in preparation of your assessment, they are grouped together. They are grouped together, but the issue is, but the issue is, what about those classes? What about those classes having only one section? Okay, having only one section. Again, my premise here is this is not compulsory. Students can still select whether to attend face to face or to enroll face to face, the limited face to face, or to enroll still go on on the existing flexible type of learning. Or what if I have a class, a major class, and we offer only one section and only one will say, yes, sir, I will go for a limited face-to-face. -face. Are you going to, are you going to pursue with that one question? Okay. Um, later on, I have a solution to that. Or what if there are less number of students who will go for ODL? Or the other way around, what if there are only two students who will go for a limited face-to-face -face versus the four, 38 students only for the ODL? Are you going to pursue that? No? So um, class sectioning is a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal issue. It has, it has implication to financial uh, resources of the university of the school it has implication to teaching teachers load it has implication to students load it has implication to the retrofitting guidelines after all you have no choice <laughs> you have no choice because in the retrofitting guideline the policy states that a maximum of 10 students should be are allowed and even the distance, which is the 1.5 meters in distance. We have a regular classroom dimension as stipulated in the building code uh, in, in, in the Philippines, and that will only accommodate a few students. 10 students per, will, will, can accommodate with that kind of measurement. And you cannot just simply say, we will still go on and follow the, the same traditional way of our class sectioning and meeting them because in the limited face-to-face, -face, there are very specific limitations as to when and what are considered limited. That's one. The other one that I find very interesting and very important consideration is the class-based learning continuity plan. 
what will happen if or we should be ready we should be ready when one of our students is suspected for the virus what if one of our students are or is a first gen a second gen and match it to the existing protocol in our university like in our university at siliman university once you are a second generation um contact you are you are not allowed to go on campus okay even if that is second generation and then third generation and fourth and so on or oh, what if in the quarantine and what if there are changes in the local and the national mandate like for for Dumaguete, we are in automatic MEGCQ. Be familiar with those guidelines. So everything should be incorporated there. I feel that these three major policies should be set up before deciding whether to achieve or to implement a limited face-to-face. -face. After all, it is not also it is not also compulsory for the institutions to subscribe into the limited face-to-face -face because after all, um, the institution should apply to the Commission Higher Education before any instruction takes place. So we should look at, let's should work together and identify what are those retrofitting guidelines. Again, uh, look at the financial resources, the different implications. Because um, uh, if we are a teacher, we it's it's easy for us to say, oh, change my room, <laughs> change that forty computer classes, a uh, computer units, and just change it to ten. And it's not that easy because you have to consider, you know, you have to consider the expenses, you have to consider the the class hours, you have to consider sectioning. Thank you.